Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. In this video, I'm going to show you how to perform a chi-square goodness of fit uh, test. And um, I have here my data uh, about my social media users. I know which region they're from. I know um, whether or not they have a car, etc., etc. And um, now I want to see whether there's a significant difference between the car ownership of my users and let's say the UK um, proportions of car ownership. So assume that in the UK, just assume eh, that in the UK, 90% um, of the people owns a car. I don't know if that is true. I'm just making it up, but assume in the UK of 10 people, nine of them have a, have a car and one of them does not. And we want to see, hey, is our group significantly different from that UK proportion? I'm going to compare this, this variable, to that proportion. And this variable is actually a nominal variable. Yes and no. Yes has a car, no has no car. Yes has a car, no has no car of different users. How to do that? Go to stats, tables. Chi-square goodness of fit test, one variable. I have categorical data, so we're going to click that. Here, choose input constants. And um, then this one. What you're actually doing is basically here, you're saying, okay, the, the N stands for a no and the, the Y stands for a, a, a yes, eh? because that is also how we coded it. We say N means no, I do not have a car, and Y means yes, I do have a car. And uh, remember that I told you that in the UK, basically, uh, we assume that 90% of the people have a car. So 9 out of 10. So that means 9 would have here a yes, and uh, 1 would have a no if they were 10. If they were 100, then this would be 10 and this would be 90. It does not matter which values you use here as long as they reflect the proportion in the population. Okay, so in the population, 90% has um, a car, so that could be 900 from the 1,000 or 90 from 100 or 9 from 10. It does not matter as long as the proportions remain the same okay so and then we're gonna uh, and then what it, once we click on okay this proportion is compared to the proportion of yes and no's in our set to see hey do we see a, a big enough difference to speak of a significant difference yes or no well let's see click on okay this is our test result basically so you see, basically, in our case, we had 16 people who did not have a car and six people who did have a car. However, if the distribution was as we expected, namely 90% does own a car and 10% not, then we would actually expect this distribution. We would expect 2.2 people to not have a car and 19.8 people to have a car. Yes, and of course, I know that you cannot have, you know, 2.2 people. You are obviously, you know, a, a person cut into small parts does not count, I always tell to my students. You just round them always up. But, you know, this is just mathematics. You understand the principle. And if we compare the actual observed values to the expected values, the difference is so big that, um, it, that this is reflected in our very, very, very low p-value. Because what kind of null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis do we have? Well, the null hypothesis basically would say that, you know, our uh, distribution of car ownership is the same as that in the, in the bigger population, okay? The alternative one would say that our car ownership distribution um, is not the same as that in the bigger population. Since we have such a small uh, p-value, we will let go of our no hypothesis, we will reject it at an alpha level of 0 0.05 and even at an alpha level of 0 0.01. And um, which means that at this point, we're putting our money on the alternative hypothesis. 
And we assume that there's a difference between our uh, uh, group in terms of car ownership and the population as a whole, the UK population as a whole. 